Okay, let's go to the next part of your research paper, which will be the introduction. When you do the introduction, of course, the main point of the introduction is to introduce the problem that you're researching. And I think this is a good point. Problem, right? The problem. What is the issue you're researching? This is why I often re-emphasize to my students over and over again, please remember, you need to have a very specific problem that you're researching. Not something general, but a very specific problem. Present that specific problem that you're studying inside your introduction. Describe the research strategy. And a lot of people miss this. You need to really introduce to the reader why did you do what you did? Why did you begin where you begin? Why did you choose to interview people in, in the Philippines? Why not in India? Why did you choose to survey people in Taipei and not in Tainan? Why did you choose to talk about restaurant satisfaction rather than airport service satisfaction. You know, so you really need to explain how your research came about is, is kind of the basic idea. You don't need to have a heading at the beginning saying introduction because right after the title you begin writing that is the introduction section. But again it depends, it always depends on your journal, your school, your department. What are their requirements? APA says you do not need to have a heading that says introduction. We just begin. But maybe at your school, maybe your professor, maybe at the journal you're sending to, they do need to have the heading introduction. In any case, the introduction comes at the beginning of your research paper. We know that. When you're writing your introduction, the things you need to keep in mind include why is this an important problem? How does this study relate to other previous work? So that's your literature review. How does this report differ? What are you doing that's different from other research that came before? What is the primary and secondary hypotheses? So your hypotheses come in this introduction section. So often we have the introduction, and then you're going to have a subsection called hypothesis. Uh, called literature review, and then you're going to have a subsection called hypotheses, or maybe as you write your literature review, you one by one make up your hypotheses. That's very normal too. But these hypotheses, your primary and secondary hypotheses, do come in this area. How are these hypotheses related, related to theory? And how does your research design test your hypotheses? So it's very normal that people have a hypothesis, but then it's not really a testable hypothesis. So please keep in mind, in your hypothesis, when you write it, you need to show how is this going to be tested? How is this testable? A key idea to our research. And then in your introduction, you can also include what are the theoretical and practical implications of this study. So, the background, how did you get to here, how did you develop it, what's the point of this, why is it important, what's the literature that came before, who did research that's similar to this, what research are you building on, and then why is this important, what's the question I'm going to actually test, how do I think I'm going to test it and answer this question, not the methodology, methodology is later, but how is it that this experiment how is it that this survey, how is it that this study is going to test that hypothesis? Now, of course, you don't always have a hypothesis. You could, at times, also have a, a research question, for example. So a research question, RQ, hypothesis H, these are quite different. You may actually just have a general research question. You may have no research question at all, but it depends on what kind of research you're doing. In most cases, we would have a hypothesis, which is testable, or a research question, which is something you're adding information to. Okay, so in the introduction, we continue with a good introduction does what? A good introduction will answer the questions in just a few pages, these questions we just brought up, describe relevant scholarship, literature review, it'll include exhaustive historical account and I think that this is something I often see students have a lot of trouble with and that is 
your research is for sure not new. There's something that came before. Did you include that? Did you explain that context? It will assume that the reader is knowledgeable, and I like this a lot because what we're saying is that the reader actually does know something. He's not nothing. So you should not write your, your introduction from every little tiny detail. You don't want to have every bit written down, but rather I know something about this area of chemistry. I don't need to explain chemistry 101 to my reader. I'm going to just skip to the parts that are important for my research. That's very key. Of course, you're going to be using citations or these references that we talked about. That is, you need to say where did this information come from, who wrote this, what article did it come from, what journal did it come from, what book did it come from. So inside your introduction, you're going to have a lot of citations. That is, citing who this came from, what is the source, a lot of those. You should only be including the previous work that is really related to your research. You don't need to include everything. You need to include only the things that are related to the research you're working on, the research question or the hypothesis you have. You need to emphasize the relevant issues in a logical way. Lots of times people use um, time, so they use earlier studies first, later studies later. Another way to organize is by um, ideas. So this idea is related to consumers, this idea is related to products, this idea is related to quality, and then each one of these has its own background, its own literature that I'm going to introduce. First this one, then this one, then the last one. So that's a kind of logical continuity. And then your hypothesis and your research questions, as we've said. You need to explain how this all links together. Okay, so that is the introduction. So that's one part of our research writing.